Hello guys and welcome back to another MCrater tutorial. Today we're going to be covering custom crafting and hopefully I'll be explaining it in a way that will be a lot easier for you guys to actually figure out. So what we have here are two different recipes. Now the assets for both of these uh, crafting tables are in the workspace folder so you can grab them and use them in your own mod workspace if you want. One is just a regular 3x3 three three crafting table. Uh, we can put items inside of the uh, crafting uh, the, the crafting slots and it will give us a output of a recipe item which we can basically take and it will remove from that thing. If we have more than one item in this particular recipe, then it should only remove one of those particular things. Uh, if we have more than one and do a shift click, then it will still take one uh, particular item out of the slot. Uh, with the other table that we have here, it is a five by five. So this is a little bit more advanced, um, but hopefully by the time you're finished watching this tutorial, know how everything is set up and how to configure it and stuff like that. Uh, with the recipes, uh, there are a couple different types of recipes or shaped, which you just saw me use for the bone meal. And then there is one called shapeless, which is basically allows us to put items anywhere in the thing as long as it's uh, the same amount of items that are required. So basically this recipe for the grass block requires two dirt and two seeds regardless of what the crafting recipe is for the shape. So that's why they call it shapeless because it doesn't really have a shape. Um, shaped is basically when you have something that is set up in a specific way. Uh, for example, if we wanted uh, grass on the top and or seeds on the top and dirt on the bottom and then this would be shaped okay so i want to demonstrate a couple things uh with the crafting system um i'm using tags for basically crafting all the components so if you are adding things like glass and stuff like that or stained glass then you want to make sure that it's under a forge tag or at least at the very minimum make sure that there are some support for other mods within it um it's a little bit harder to work with items because you don't really know what the tags are and stuff. But Forge, I'll provide some links down in the description so you can look up um, some regular community tags as well as the official Forge tags as well. So with this, the 5x5, five five, we can demonstrate the um, particular recipe by mixing in some stained glass. We can just put something like, just put something over here and we can do some uh some obsidian so basically these are all under one tag these slots right here and those are all under one tag and these slots have to be empty so that's basically what the recipe is but this tag is basically allows us to put any stained glass or anything mixed in so we can do any recipe combination like this using tags so it allows us to have more flexibility over the shaped shape and same goes with the um crying obsidian as well we can add a recipe support for that so you, as you can see it's pretty flexible and we can craft it up and it'll give us the item all right so let's go into m creator and then we'll just take a look at the procedures that i provided and a few other of the components and i'll do my best to explain how to set up the block the gui and uh, then the procedures all right, so in the workspace, we have two folders. They're basically structured the same way. We have GUI and blocks for both of these uh, particular folders. We have the large crafting station, which is the uh, five by five. And then we have the normal, which is the three by three. I would have added a four by four, but that would have taken a lot more time to do. And it's an even number, which makes recipes a little bit hard to make a balanced crafting recipe. So I went with a five by five and a three by three. But if you want to add one for four by four, then hopefully by the time that you finish this video, you'll know how to do that. All right, so let's go into the normal one. We'll start there. We'll start at the block level so we know what um, everything is set up. So you want to make a block and you set all your texture properties. You can do whatever you want on that tab. Uh, there's nothing really required on this tab either. 
uh, when you get to the advanced, uh, depending if you're crafting things automated. So if your station is automated, then you would want a tick update. If it's through a player interaction through OpenGUI, like a OpenGUI window, then you can just basically leave this as zero. So you won't need to worry about that. For the tile entity, you will need to enable this so you can have inventory. Now the general slot count, you have 10 slots, you have your nine crafting grid slots, and then you have your output slots. So make sure that you set your ID, your slot size accordingly. You will also need to bind this GUI to your right click action when you actually open it up and you'll need to actually set your GUI here. Though this can be done after you create the block, that doesn't really matter as long as you do link it up eventually. And you want the items to drop when the block is destroyed, so make sure this is checked. For your output slot, you want to also make sure that you disable in into the following slots. So disable inserting into the following slots. So basically uh, your ninth slot will be your output. Um, for example, you start with ID zero and then you go up to your nine slots, right? So that would be the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are your crafting grid slots. And then the ninth slot, which is actually your 10th one, your 10th inventory count, is going to be slot nine because it's one additional from zero, right? So if you think about it, it's just your total size minus one. So that equals your output slot. And that will make a little more sense when you see the GUI. Um, fluid and storage, you don't need to worry about it. You can enable it if you want, but it's not required. Um, for the custom um, automated crafting and stuff, you would need to go ahead and enable this, uh, which is your update tick. Again, you will need update tick enabled if you're going to do things automated. So make sure that if you do it that way that you set an update tick for that. Generation, no required things here. So for the large station or large block, what you want to go to is a 26 block count because five times five is 25, and then you have your output slot, which is your 26 one. So that's what you'll need for there. You also want to make sure that you're on both blocks, your stack size is 64, so you can add additional items if you want to. This is really important for both your input and output counts uh, for crafting. Uh, for this one though, uh, the only difference is the GUI and the slot output slot ID. So the output slot ID is actually 25 because if you were to take 26 minus one, that is 25. So that would be our output slot. Um, again, there's all the other things that we already covered is already been, is the same for this particular one. Okay, so let's talk the GUI. So there's just some different components that make up this particular uh, GUI. There is our GUI. We need to enable the GUI with slots, which allows us to get items from our inventory. And it also allows us to place slots. So these slots here, all of them, are input slots, the basically the blue ones, which are these ones right here. Uh, for the input ones, you can see the IDs. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. And you can see the ID system goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then our output slot is 9. This is really important for this particular structure because when you're setting up the recipes themselves, you need to remember those particular ID patterns. With the output slot, what we have going on is a procedure item taken from normal output slot, which is basically linked up through here. You also want to disable placement for this particular slot. So make sure that they can't place it in and you do not want the, the slot to basically drop any items. By default, it looks like this without the uh, inventory. So you want to disable that and enable this and this will automatically disable placement into that particular slot. Uh, then you want to basically link up your procedure, which we'll cover right now. So basically, if we go into here, we have the normal one. What's going on here is we're basically setting the slot ID uh, or slot number, which by default, we want it to be zero because this is our starting slot ID. And then what we want to do is we want to run it nine times because there's nine slots. We want to run that this procedure or this repeat block nine times. And then what we're doing is we're basically removing 
one item from the slot, which is basically increased by one every cycle this repeater goes through, which again, it goes through nine times, so it's going to go up to a total of eight because our starting ID is zero. So basically, our it will start from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then it will be over from the repeat function. So in short, what this does is it removes the item when the player actually removes the item from the or takes the item from the slot so this will work with shift clicking you don't need to do that with like set up it for this shift clicking feature either it just needs this particular one and it will be automatically set up for the input slots um, you want them to basically drop the item if the block is broken so make sure uh, if it's or basically if it's not closed and not linked then you want it to basically drop the item by default if it's linked to your block like we showed in the GUI then it should stay in the crafting recipe um, but make sure that this is checked either way for your input slots so all these slots have the same properties like this and you want them to have interaction for picking up and taking out there is one last important thing for the GUI system, and this is the um, actual tick update. So if you see the part down over on the bottom corner, it says GUI procedure triggers. It's at the bottom left corner. You can click, click to expand. So you click on that and it will expand some additional triggers for the GUI itself. There's one for when the GUI is opened, one for the when the GUI is ticking, and there's one for the GUI closed. So basically what you wanna do for the procedures that I've provided is basically while this GUI is ticking and then you wanna create a procedure, I've already created it, so we're just gonna open it up and then we can see that this procedure is running a couple things. Now, when you're creating a recipe, what you want to do is you want to test for all the recipes and the conditions for them and then basically set the output item for that particular recipe now you want to use an if else statement to create additional ones so if we wanted to add another recipe what we would do is we would go ahead and add another recipe here copy this over uh, to the other slot and then we would basically go ahead and set our amount that we would want the item and our condition which is basically what we've done here now I'm going to close that and open it up again so we have a brand new uh, thing. So basically what happens is the each uh, line of the condition for the recipes is tested for. We're calling that from a separate procedure so it keeps this procedure compact. And we're making sure that the output slot for our item is set to 9. So this is synchronized throughout the entire recipe. Um, if it none of these conditions are met above what it's going to do is the else statement and what that will do is it'll just clear the output slot so it basically resets the uh, recipe so players can't just uh, duplicate items and stuff so it's really important to have this item this particular clear slot at the bottom here or it's going to just keep the room the last uh, item in the output slot that you basically performed a recipe for so make sure that this is set up like this now let's go into the recipe uh, procedures now that we've covered the GUI. All right, so I have a recipe folder up here and then we have a couple recipes. Now I will cover the grass one in just a second. That's going to be a little bit different because we have the shapeless recipe up there and there's something that I'll also have to cover separately with that one. So we'll start with the bone meal one. And at first glance, it looks like a lot, but it's really not. We're just testing for a tag for the ones that are um, basically our material. So we put our namespace followed by a colon and then followed by the path for that recipe. So again, with these um, tags, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you use as many um, tags that the community for modding and stuff already uses. So use things like forge, um, die, uh, I think it's dies, and then the color, so slash color. This would allow you to select dies from other mods as well if it's under the forge namespace. There's a whole list of different tags the community and stuff uses, but for example, um, we're just using specific ones under our own namespace. Generally, you don't want to do that if you can avoid it, but in most cases when you're creating custom items and stuff that might not be supported, 
will still need to be made under your own mod namespace. It's just the way that it is for the thing. Not everything is supported. So what we're doing is you might notice the pattern is very similar to our crafting recipe. We have slot zero, slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, slot five, six, seven, and eight. So we're just testing for bone meal in all of these slots and it basically is under a tag. So we can make sure that it basically can craft up. This is returned as a logic value, which we can pull into the other procedure, which is our main procedure up here. So basically the one that we crafted up, this is where it's called. And then it basically gives us the output item if it returns true. So that's basically the simplest version that I can show you. Um, for the other one, the... Um, Shapeless crafting, this is a little bit structured differently. Um, again, we need to test for a whole bunch of other things for this to work. Um, for example, I've needed to create tags for each item that we're going to be testing for. So item one count and item two count. We also have a variable for slot count, which is how many uh, slots that we have for the uh, slots to go through so basically if we have a nine by nine then we or pardon me a three by three then we need a nine slot count one for our input slots we also have a variable for slot which needs to be at the beginning of each repeater function or repeat function which allows us to uh, reset that value from the last iteration and basically start a new cycle so basically this one resets every time that we run a new one that's why you see it at the beginning of each repeater. Uh, then what we're doing is we're going to basically take those variables that we set for count one and count two. And what we need to do is we need to test if the slots, we're going to run it through every slot now, and we're testing how many of those items are in this particular tag. So in this case, we're testing for wheat seeds and this is under my mod namespace again you would want to make sure that it's under as supported cross mod support as possible so use forge tags if possible and then we're going to increase that value for that slot by one so basically what that will do is it'll keep track of how many items of that particular tag is in that recipe type if it finds every one of those recipes or items for that particular one, it'll just store it there. So basically, if there's three items in the crafting input slots, then it'll make sure to count this as three. If it's not, then it'll just not uh, store it as that value. It does that for the other item as well, which is our dirt, ta dirt uh, tag, which we're using for that one. The other slot, which is the last test, it uses air. So Depending on your recipe, you'll want to make sure that there's no other items in that particular recipe, right? Because you're always going to be resetting the uh, procedure uh, or removing items from the output slot. So in order to make sure that the output slot is basically empty, you want to make sure the remaining slots are empty as well. So that's why we're testing if the um, other going through the slot count again, and we're getting the amount of um, air slots that are re remaining. Finally, what we're doing is we're just testing a return value and we're adding and statements. We're testing for our item and we're testing for the count of how many items we need in the recipe. So this is basically the same thing that we're doing with the other recipes, basically. But the difference is we're just testing for the general number of them. So it would be equivalent of testing for two slots like this. As long as it's two slots in any of these, then it's going to be doing that. It's a little hard to explain, but we need just two of those particular items to be true. We're setting this to an equal value, so it's an exact amount. And we're doing that for item one and item two. And then what we're doing is we're getting the air count. We're testing if the air count is the slot count, which is, again, nine or how many other slots you have in your inventory. And then what we want to do is subtract that by the amount combined from our other required items. So in this case, we have two plus two equals four. So we add four to this out, this slot here. 
that will give us an output of five remaining air slots or five required air slots. All right, so there's just one last thing that I really need to cover and that is the uh, particular part where shape, shaped crafting has alternative ones. So this is a little bit different. We're going to import a other procedure that I have here for a three by three crafting grid. Oh, wrong one. Uh, three by three GUI slot procedure. And this is basically the alternative shaped crafting for the uh, dirt and seeds one that we had before. So this would basically turn it into um, a required uh, grass seeds or wheat seeds up at the top here, slot one, slot two, and then dirt below it. And then our remaining five slots would re be required air. Now you might notice there's a small problem with this method. Uh, first thing is there's no alternative shape crafting. So if we were to want to craft it over in these corner of the nine by three. So if we open up the GUI, it'll be a little bit easier for me to show you. So at the moment, this recipe is set up for these four grids up here, but you might notice that all these other ones are not, we have like four different alternative ways that we can craft this. We can craft it in these slots and these slots, and then these four slots, but we're only testing for these four up here. So that's one of the issues with the shaped crafting is if you were to want to add support for this, you need to adjust the recipe a little bit. So to do this, uh, what you can do is you can go to the logic tab, grab the, the light blue operator with equal sign, and then you want to click on the equal sign and then you want to go to or which will be a drop down box and then there will be or and then just for to make it a little bit easier for keeping an eye on how the recipes and stuff are set up. I suggest actually going and selecting external inputs or I think it's external inputs. Uh, yeah, external inputs. So it's shaped like this and then you can basically duplicate this. And you want to do that um, depending on how many times that you need your recipe to uh, do it, like have different alternative locations. So in our case, uh, we have this one. We have four other all outputs that it can possibly be. So basically we have three more that we need to duplicate this recipe for. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a total of three or statements and then we can basically put our recipes on top of this so we would do something like this and then we would adjust the recipe for the other slots so for example we would move this over here move that over there we would set this one to zero set the slot for this one to two and then we would do this for our other slots as well this needs to be three and then this needs to be five. So that would be our next recipe. And then we would do this one more time. We're copying over the and statement one. And then we're going to move this one down and that one up. So we're gonna set the IDs for these slots. So we want the ID for this one to be one and this one to be seven. And then we want this one to be moved down and that one to be moved up. And we want this one to be two and this one to be eight. And then we need it one more time. So we're gonna copy this one down and we're going to set this one over here to here and move that one over. And then we're gonna set this to three and this one to five. And then we want this one to move over and that one to move over that way. And we're gonna set this one to six and that one to eight. There we go, we have added support for all the different corners. So it can craft in this side, that side, these four here, those four, and these four. All right, so I know that looks like a lot of stuff going on because there is, there's one last thing that you should probably do. And when you're working with this, it's probably a good idea to collapse the blocks in their groups so you can actually know what one you're gonna work with. So basically you have your recipe. I suggest keeping your main inventory one open so you can kind of see the recipe if you open up the procedure. Uh, the alternative ones you don't really need to worry about too much. Mm -hmm. So I basically covered all the components that make up this particular 
uh, project. Now, it's not much different when it comes down to the uh, 5x5 one. It's actually pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference is there's more slots. So if we were to open up the GUI, you can see that the GUI numbers are a lot different. Uh, it goes from 0 to 4, and then it just keeps increasing like this. Our output slot is 25, and you have to kind of adjust the uh, scale of the GUI a little bit. So what I've done is I've basically set the um, GUI height to 185 and the inventory offset to 10, and that seems to give me enough room to put the uh, slots around here. So you'll have to kind of tinker with that with your block and stuff if you want to do it that way. For the um, update tick, uh, it's basically the same thing. You have the same procedure, and if you want to add more recipes, and you just add an else if statement, copy over your condition, set up your condition for that particular one, and then you want to make sure that the output slot is basically generated. So you can set your count of that item, and then your basically your item or block for that particular output slot. For the recipe condition, this is a lot more larger in size. As you can see here, this is one recipe um, pattern. So basically, we have a total of 25 slots for all these different things. I've tried to organize them in a way that it would be as easy for you guys to follow uh, because I know this is a pretty complicated uh, subject for a lot of you. So basically we've just increased the number for each time that we've created the recipe. So as you can see, these are the three air required ones for the recipe for crafting the beacon. And we've encased the uh, top layer around here as glass. So we're using a glass tag for that. And then we're basically putting obsidian in the middle, which is just under the air ones. So that's basically the same recipe that we used to craft it up with and now each one has its own tags. These are all the glass tags. Now, you, there is a tag for glass uh, blocks in the uh, forge namespace. I'll be covering that in just a second. But um, as you can see, it's the tag that we used for all the glass. There's one for the upcrying obsidian. And then there's other ones for the regular one that we added as well. So if we go to our... GUI tags, and then we got our wheat seeds, we got our dirt, and we got our bone meal. All right, so one last thing. Uh, there are a couple places that you can go to actually find the tags that are for Forge, what the community uses. So there's Forge built-in tags, and then there's community tags that the... Um, community uses which we can find on my m creators website so if you go to um forge's site i need to find where it is in this list um i think it's uh let's see here styling guides just give me a second to find it all right so i did find the page i had to um uh, must have been on a different uh, browser um account so uh, basically what these ones are you have your block tags which are basically the ones that forge uses specifically so anything in here is pretty much safe to use for cross mod compatibility uh, you have blocks items fluids entity types and then you have the community tags down at the bottom which are basically ones the community uses not all of them would probably be uh, useful for all things, but you can basically see uh, some of the ones down here. All right, and then for the Minecraft tags, now not all of them here are basically community tags that you'll find uh, across the entire community. You c will have to kind of go between this one and the other one. Now, the first one is block tags, and then down below is the item tags, and I think think that's about it for the ones here. So as you can see, there's dusts and other things that you might want to put in here. So things like dyes, uh, this would be under the forge namespace as forge namespace already covers dyes. So if we go to, um, let's see, where is it? Uh, it should be under items D. So D, 
scroll all the way up and then you can see that it's forge dyes slash lime and all the other colors there's also one for forge slash dyes which is the main group which all the dyes go under so as you can see here this is basically the uh, main group for the dyes and then that basically links to this one here inventory blocks for block procedures now when you're working with the uh, recipes that I did create um, they're not going to work with automation uh, they're designed for the GUI procedure blocks which are these ones when the player is opened so they're client side uh, if you're going to update your recipes to work with automation, then what you need to do is rather than run the uh, recipe from the inventory tick update, you need to run it from the block tick update. And you need to make sure that your recipes are not going to use anything with entity in it. So basically, you, you will need to get rid of the blocks here. Uh, any blocks that are selecting the inventory, you'll need to actually set that to block inventory selection so these ones right here rather than the inventory selection which is this one right here uh, items also have their own uh, particular procedure for testing inventory slots if we scroll down we can see there's one for items and there is also one for entities as well so we can go to the slot which is way at the bottom down here and we can see the item from slot so you'll need to work with those particular ones Again, this one says GUI in it. That one says just the inventory for the entity. That one has a provided entity stack. And then you have one for blocks, which has the X, Y, and Z in included in it. So those are the different ones that you would want to adapt to. Again, you would need it on a, if you're automating the recipe, then you'll need to do it on a tick update of some sort. Uh, so you have to play around with the triggers for those particular element types. And that also goes for the while open tick update. Rather than have the set item to here, what you will need to do is actually set up the um, slot for setting the slot in the output slot. So you want to carry everything over from this one to the other particular block here. So if you wanted to do it for, say, this particular recipe, then you would need to swap out these with the ones for the blocks so we can clear slot as well and we're going to use the one like that and as you can see we're basically just converting it over to a block thing now we would have to get rid of those dependencies but now you can see it's under the x y and z and world namespace so that would work with a block uh, dependency for the update tick um, so that's basically all you need to do for the recipes and stuff like that. Hopefully this video has been informative. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe before you click off and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.